Uh, yeah, g'day. That's my mask and helmet for Airsoft. Nice mesh mask. Breathes quite nicely. Better than a paintball mask. Um, had quite a few fogging issues with paintball masks. Don't get that with the Airsoft mask. Also, very few paintball masks look quite as styly as the Airsoft masks. Just showing off some of my equipment. Uh, paintball gloves. Pretty good protection from a wrap across the knuckles. Of course, that's the part where the BB always, or the paintball always hits. Right there. I've been hit three times on the unexposed parts of the fingers. Seldom actually on the protected parts of course if I took the gloves off. That's where the, the paintballs and BBs would land. Um, like any sport you're going to have a fairish amount of equipment by the time you've got there. I mean you can start out basic as, but then you start going oh I can improve that or I can fix that up or I can make that better or that's not quite like I wanted it and next thing you know you're uh, replacing pretty much everything and getting better and better and better stuff certain things you can't skimp on some things you can talk to you a bit about budget kind of stuff uh, suspenders I'm wearing got those because I found that the weight of my holster rigs were pulling my duty belt down and thus because my duty belt was looped through my trousers my trousers as well um, no critical wardrobe failures they didn't quite come down around my ankles but they came down low enough to start biting into my hips and being bloody uncomfortable when you're running around the place so I've now got these genuine Bundeswehr issue suspenders that actually button onto my Vectarm pants. The pants and shirt I bought quite cheaply at Army Surplus. Good thing about them is that they're hard wearing, durable, they might be second hand but they've got a large number of years left in them. Good old military specification, they don't make them like the uh, usual cruddy clothes you get out there and pay a fortune for I might have. But um, certain bits of gear that you don't really want to skimp on, um, holsters, um, if you're spending out good money on pistols and stuff like that for airsoft or paintball, you really don't want to drop your rather expensive investment um, slash secondary weapon on the ground and damage it, so good holsters, not um, cruddy useless ones, um, need protection, always good you know dropping um, to the ground don't know what you're going to land on you could be dropping uh, doing an urban scenario dropping to concrete or gravel you could be out in the bush you could be um, dropping down on anything from soft earth to an embedded stone to um, tree branch anything like that uh, for the younger people it's important for me with my old knees absolutely critical the uh, footwear, of course, you don't skimp on that either. The other stuff, though, you can generally get quite cheaply. My helmet. It's a cheap Chinese M88 copy. Nowhere near the quality of the real deal. The uh, strap was actually quite useless. So I ended up getting a cycle strap and threading it through it. Cycle helmet strap. And that done a much, much better job than the other one. So it's just a cheap plastic M88 copy with a 
flat tone cover on it, but that is quite sufficient. It's protected me from belts around the ears from ES, um, paint balls and airsoft BBs. Just the same as the um, mask and my paintball mask have protected me from a few smacks in the face. The um, other bits of the gear, I'll just show you my leg rigs in place. If I can. That's my uh, Phobos holster for the P uh, P99. On this side, I've got a nylon one that I normally carry my CZ75 in there. See the proper duty belt. I've got that cheap second hand, oh, second hand um, army surplus kind of thing. And the um, nylon holsters serviceable, not expensive, but it's nowhere near as uh, good as the Phobos holster for the tension, of course. And you've got to do the manual unclipping the strap thing to get it off. The thing that I didn't mention in my other videos about holsters is that, well, I'm, I'm not a soldier, I'm not suiting up on base and wandering around on base or in an uh, active zone. I'm a sportsman, I go out, I shoot at some of my friends, they shoot back at me, we have a hell of a good time and we go home. Now that's where the problem starts. You can't go wandering around the place tooled up and um, you certainly can't you know, intimidate anybody. Now even an empty holster is likely to intimidate certain members of the community. The slide-on style belt loops, of course, mean you've got to unfasten your duty belt or have a separate duty belt that you can remove and dump off intact. My duty belt acting as my actual belt as well. But what I like about the uh, holsters that I've got is that all I've got to do And now I can walk down the street and um, just look like a bit of a dick wearing flick time. But the uh, thing is, you can usually get away with a pair of um, camo trousers and just throw a jacket over the top of everything else so that it doesn't look like I'm suited up in some military outfit. Now one thing that I've found with having to wear the suspenders is it gets in the way of my name tag and also my um, club badges. So I came up with my own little solution. Made myself a makeshift outer vest. Flat tan shirt, and I've cut the sleeves off. Goes over the top. I can carry keys and stuff like that in my pockets without the suspenders getting in the way. I've got my name tag and my club badge. And it blends in with all the rest of it. Cheap, simple to the point. 20 bucks. And about 
I won't tell you how many hours of hand sewing. But, uh, hope this has been an interesting video. I'm just waiting for the screeds and screeds of uh, Euroduk in the comments because this is YouTube and uh, people seem to have nothing better to do than sit down and write Euroduk. So uh, for those people, I say, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs>